The first thing we're going to do today is we're going to talk about vowels and consonants. Do we have any questions? Any questions on vowels and consonants? You me? Anything? It says that given that the auditory space for possible vowels is somewhat triangular, right. the section of the three most distinguished vowels are the F, which is obviously beneficial. Obviously. Obviously mm -hmm. beneficial. So it will be possible to add just one vowel to these basic three vowels, that will be four vowels. But why is this? But it turns out that far more languages have five or seven vowels. Right. Then four vowels. Yes. Why? Why? Because, probably because of the triangular shape. Because a triangle has three points. Yeah. And we tend to have just numbers that add two onto that. So we've sort of like got a base of three and then add two more, add two more. It's those, yeah, those spaces at the side. I, that's the best explanation I can give you. I don't have a better one. But it, there is a tendency. We tend to have an odd number. Yeah. It's probably because it comes down to one at the bottom and that sets it off. It's odd. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a really good answer for that, but that's the best I can give. Anybody else? Um, so if, if a language has four vowels... Has, has... Or were to have. Let's say were to have. Were to have yeah. four vowels. Yeah. So except for E, R, and U. Which one is this? E, A, U. So it could be a number of things. I suppose A is possible, O is possible. So there's no... Um... I can't answer for sure. I don't have the tone T about that. Okay. You might have to look that up online. I don't know if we actually do have the numbers on that, but I suppose you could look at the database and look at vowels, I'm sorry, look at languages according to how many vowels they have, starting from the fewest vowels working up to the most vowels. And you can just look at the languages in that line. And then you probably get the answer there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. On page 35, uh, it said that uh, the vowels in could and could at one time occupy the left part of mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. uh, But uh, now they are pronounced with formants that would place them more in the middle of the diagram. But I wonder uh, why are they changed? Why did they change? historical phonological change. It's a historical phonological change because languages are constantly changing and in yukai, you have you had yukai? You've had yukai, right? There's a chapter on historical linguistics and languages pretty much go through the same progression of changes. Languages all over the world, they seem to follow the same steps more or less. And in English we had the great vowel shift and that just pushed everything beyond, pushed everything, the next step beyond, and then the other vowels came up and filled in the spaces that were left. Languages constantly change. I think part of the reason is just boredom, because we like to go hua ya. You're at the age, you're getting a little old now, but you're still at the age, you're still at the age where you like to go hua ya. You like to be a little different. You don't want to be like your parents. You end up like your mothers. You'll be like your mother, probably. <laughs> But you, you want to be yourself, you want to have an independent identity, you get tired of doing things the same old way, it represents old fogies, old people who are kind of boring, so you start doing new things for fun. And sometimes it starts with a certain social group and then you like to identify with that social group and it spreads. As soon as it becomes common, people pick it up and we've got change. It's not that mysterious because books will say, well, we really don't know how language changes. But I think a lot of it, they try to account for it by transmission of language from generation to generation, that there are some you know, there's a little difference the way the child learns the language compared to how the parents spoke it. But very often, I think it's just called Hua We want to do something a little different. We hear a different sound and we start doing it for fun. I did that once when I was a kid. I started picking up a little, little British pronunciations and I got yelled at by my father and then I stopped. 
he says, oh, you sound so affected, stop that. And you will, you know, if you don't get bad feedback, you just keep on doing it. <clears throat> I don't know if that answered the question. Yeah, okay, somebody else? The triangle we just mentioned is a literal triangle of the mouth shape, or is well, just an idea? It's, look at the vowel space, it's a trapezoid. The, the top is much wider than the bottom, and that makes it somewhat triangular. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Okay, so can you find the uh, overtones on the dive, the figure, the uh, waveform? And the waveform? Can I borrow your book a minute? I was going to bring it, but I didn't. How do we find the overtones? Um, okay, so this is each vibration, each opening and closing of the vocal folds is this. And after that, we have, this is going to take too much explanation. We're going to have to wait till chapter 8. Can we wait to chapter 8? Because if I start, I can't stop. <laughs> All right, can we wait to chapter 8? It's coming up really soon. I'll be able to explain it clearly then. But if I start now, we're going to get off on a tangent and we haven't finished 7 yet. I'd rather we finish 7 and then I, will, I promise I will explain anything that I'm able to that you ask. Yeah, because once I start, it's going to be too big. Okay, that's the only promise. We got close in keying the two books, but this chapter is just a little bit too early. So just sort of the nice, yeah, and we'll come back to it and sort everything out. Okay? It's those little, those little, um, those, yeah, those little, thank you, those little points after the big one. Those are basically the overtones that you're seeing. Okay. Anybody else? No? We're okay? Hand in your work. Which chapter are you going to read for next week in vowels and consonants? Um, five. Chapter five or five? Five. Yeah, very good. Okay, we're not going to read chapter five. There is no chapter five. So our plan for today is we're going to finish chapter seven with the exercises. We will have a test on Monday, this coming Monday. And I will probably also give you that pronunciation diagnostic test with 25 items that I told you about. That will probably be together with the test on Monday, okay? And maybe a dictation as well. So that's the plan. Uh, let's just finish up chapter 7. It's on page 1 and 80. Mm -hmm. And the second paragraph in the middle. Right. There are, however, contrastive filler laterals in a few languages spoken in Papua New Guinea. Once more? Papua New Guinea. New, yeah. New. Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea. There we go. Such as mid Wahiki, mm -hmm. which you can find on the CD. The symbol for palatal, palatal laterals is an upside down Y. Right, an upside down, I would say capital Y, yeah, because it's, it's so large. So this is li, 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 palatal, li, 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 okay? Try saying in Italian words such as fa, Familia. Mm -hmm. Good. Familia. Familia. When you see GL, that makes it into a palatalized L. Familia. Familia. Mm -hmm. Family and fidio. Mm -hmm. Figlio. 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 Because you have fils and fil in, in French, and uh, you can see the relationship. Figlio is the, is the Latin form for son. Okay. In both of these words, the lateral sound is double. In both of these words. In both of these words, right. the lateral sound is doubled, acting as the final consonant of one syllable and the first consonant of the next. And the first consonant. And the first consonant right. of the next. Additional examples of Italian laterals are the, in the material for this chapter on the CD. Note that some forms of some forms of Spanish distingu distinguish between the some forms of Spanish distinguish between 
know that some forms of some forms remember some some yeah. forms of Spanish distinguish between the and the similar sounding sequence the right in words such as polio mm -hmm. chicken and pol chicken, uh, chicken 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 right. and polio polio mm -hmm. polio polio see if you can make this distinction there Wait, are once more see see if you can make this mm? not make this. this not this these distinction yep, this this mm -hmm. distinction mm -hmm. there are also retroflex laterals for which the symbol is l with a hook mm -hmm. try to find this try to find this on the cd using the the index of sounds which can be assessed from the title page which can be what accessed mm -mm. Accessed. Yes, everyone. Accessed. 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 Very good. I'm going to look for for Italian. They don't have a table for you in the book, but the word for there, T H E R E. Let's listen. Li. Just L I. Li. 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 Okay. We try repeating. Li, 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 li. Okay, that's really no different from Chinese, but with a palatized, palatalized L at the beginning to him. Li, li. Listen three times. Li, 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 li. Put your tongue up on your hard palate. A lot of surface comes in contact with the hard palate. Li. Yi. Yi. Okay, the third one was better, I think. Yi. Yi. Okay. And then we have another contrast here. F O lengthened L A, which means crowd. Okay, listen three times. Tonna. Okay, listen and repeat. Tonna. 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 Good. This one is palatalized. And it means leaf. It means leaf, like folio in English. Listen three times. Folia. 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 Okay, listen and repeat. Folia. Good. And the next one is conceal with a plain L and then keep watch with a palatalized L. It's V E L A R A E here. Okay, listen a few times, three times. Okay, listen and repeat. Vila. It's more A, not too much E. Listen again. You've got to tap because Italian has trilled R's and it sounds like a very short trill at the end or a tap. Velare. All right. And this one is palatalized. Keep watch. Vigliare. I heard it. Let's hear it three times. Vigliare. 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 Listen and repeat. Vigliare. 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 All right, we've got two here, uh, two pairs left here. The first one has an initial alveolar nasal N, and the first one means names. 名字的, 
复数 ，and the second one means nouns 小矮人的复数 ，and it's an n。Plain n at the beginning for the first one, and it's a palatalized n at the beginning for the second one. No. Listen to it a few times. No. 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 Listen and repeat. No. 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 And this is the palatalized one. It's at the beginning now. Nyom. Listen three times. Nyom. 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 Okay. Listen. Repeat. Nyom. 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 Good. And then there's one more with an intervocalic n and palatalized n. Grandfather and dream. Listen. No, no. Listen three times. No, no. No, no. No, no. Listen and repeat. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. No, no. Can hear the n is lengthened. What do we call lengthened consonants like that? Do you remember? Call in geminates. <clears throat> a geminate is a lengthened sound. You can also use it for vowels, but I see it more often used for consonants. So our example here is no 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 no. That n is lengthened. It's about twice as long as it would be if it were not a geminate. That's called a geminate. Geminate. I think we mentioned it before, haven't we? No. Okay, well, you've got it. We need it for a test at some point. So, it's a lengthened vowel or consonant, but I see it more often used for consonants. Let's try this one again. No, 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 no. Good. And the next one means dreams. Starts with a s, and it has a palatalized n between the vowels. Sonho. Listen three times. Sonho. 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 Listen and repeat. Sonho. 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 Okay. So that's palatalization, and the examples they give here are from. Castilian Spanish. That means the Spanish spoken in Spain, as opposed to Latin America, because in Latin America, at least in most places, they pronounce double L like a y, pollo, pollo, pollo is the word for chicken. But in Spain, and not all over Spain, this is in standard Spanish, but not in all the dialects. Pollo, 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 but Sharma B. Polio. 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 Separate them. Polio. Polio. Chicken. Polio. 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 Yeah. In Mexico, it's polio. Okay.、Um, there are also retroflex laterals for which the symbol is L with a hook, and I couldn't find it. I looked for a retroflex lateral, and I didn't find it. And that really takes care of it. We've gotten through all of our new consonant sounds. And you're going to need to do some review to make sure that you know all of the symbols and the sounds that they represent correctly. That's going to come up in the next section that we're going to read now. Okay, next reader. Summary of manners of articulation. Table 7.8 presents a summary of the manners of articulation we have been discussing. Note that the terms central and lateral have been placed separately to indicate that. To indicate that they to indicate to indicate that they can be used in conjunct conjunctions with many、mm? of in in conjunctions、mm? conjunct conjunctions oh wait con con in conjunct junction there we go with many of the terms in the upper part of the table、mm -hmm. this table also lists many of the symbols that they that have been mentioned in the latter part of this chapter. 
You should be sure that you can pronounce each of them in a variety of contexts.、Hmm? Contexts. Context. Con- It's just a T at the end.、Con- so all we have to do is add a S sound. Contexts. Contexts. There. Okay. Contexts.、Mm-hmm. Again, don't forget that you can find examples of all of them on an IPA chart on a CD. On the IPA.、Uh-uh. And and don't forget that you can. We wouldn't stress that you can, would they? And don't forget that you can find examples. Again, don't forget that you can find examples of all of them on the IPA chart on the CD. All right. So you've all got the CD. You can do that yourself. Although it's probably better to ask in class if you have any questions because on the CD you don't see their mouths, and it's sometimes hard to hear it clearly, especially the more unusual sounds. For the familiar sounds, we sort of impose our hearing. We impose our idea of how it should sound and what we actually hear. When we hear it, we think we hear it clearly, the way it was supposed to be. But when it's an unfamiliar sound, like some of these, you couldn't tell if it was an o or u. I couldn't either, really. When you look at it, you go, "Oh, it should be an o. It's o and not u." So if you're only using your ears, sometimes it just is not clear enough. So anything you want to know, please ask in class, and then we can demonstrate them a little more clearly.、Mm, central and lateral have been placed separately. So you'll see it at the bottom of table seven point eight. That means they set them off because many of the everybody looking top of one one eighty one, bottom of the table, because many of these sounds can also be pronounced as a lateral or as a central. So we can't just put them in the same list. It's not either lateral or stop or either lateral or approximate or trill or whatever because some of them go together. Tap anyway can go definitely can go together with with、uh, lateral, so they're just a different dimension. They're just a different parameter. 就是另外一个参数，不能跟它完全相等的。Okay, next reader.、Um, the only consonants we have not dis-、uh, we have not considered in detail in this chapter are approximants. Alveolar approximants, both central r and lateral. Or have been discussed, but sounds such as w, y, as in wet, yet have not. Approximants of the latter kind are sometimes called semivowels or glides. And the Chinese is called 半元音 or 半母音都有 In my classes, we usually follow 元音 for vowel and 半元音 for semivowel. And glides. Remember our definition of a glide. In Chinese, it's called a hua in. Glide is a hua in. That's easy to remember. Glide hua. In, uh, in a in a diphthong, the glide is the what part of the diphthong? Less, less prominent. Remember the less prominent. The more prominent part is called the. Don't be misled by the question; it's very easy. The more prominent part of a diphthong is called what? Remember, that's the part that we had to put the tone mark over in pinyin.、Mm-hmm. It's called the main vowel. That was really hard, wasn't it? <laughs> I knew you'd be irritated when you heard it. It's called the main vowel in Chinese. It's called 主要元音，主要元音。We usually call vowels mu in in this class because it's Taiwan, but in my studies of Hanyuan, Hanyuan Xuan, I did a lot of them. It's basically what I majored in. We called it yuan in, not mu in. Mu in sounded a little too. <laughs> We called it yuan in, and the word for consonant in that system is not zi in. They call it fu in. That's right. Fu Ren 大学的辅辅助的辅辅音 is consonant. Yuan in is vowel. It's not a big deal. And it's not really showing off. It's just 习惯的问题 The things from mainland China you will see mostly follow 元音跟辅音 Taiwan we usually use 母音跟子音 So the main part of a diphthong is called the. The more prominent part of a diphthong is called the main vowel. Yeah, and the less prominent part is called the glides. Just so you know what we're talking about here: 半元音、半母音 and 华音 Let's go on. It、uh, it will be more appropriate to discuss them after we have considered the nature of vowels more fully. 
nature of vowels more fully. Slow down a little bit. The nature of vowels more fully.、Mm -hmm. But in order to describe vowels, we must first leave the field of articulatory phonetics. Are what? Articulatory. There we go. Articulatory yeah, phonetics, and consider some of the basic principles of acoustic phonetics.、Mm -hmm. Principles. Principles. Good. Remember when we were talking last time about postvocalic l in British English, how it's disappearing like building. Well, it's been disappearing at different times in history for a very long time. For example, 说话 in English, T 开头那个字 talk. Do we pronounce the L? No, we don't. How about 分笔 talk? We don't pronounce the L. There's some words from which it has disappeared for some speakers, and it's only partially disappeared for others. For example, 手掌 palm. Now, usually they will teach you palm. Palm. Do you hear any L in there? Palm. Listen to the way I say it normally. Okay. The way I say it normally is palm. Do you hear an L or not? Listen. Palm. Xinren. Almond. Palm. Almond. You're not so sure, Vivian. What do you hear? There's a little L sound, and this also made me wonder too: Do I have an L there or not? Before I learned phonetics, and I couldn't analyze it. What part of the L is there? There is something there. It's not like my British friend has absolutely no L there. We've discussed this. We must have discussed every single issue in here,、um, but he loves this stuff, and it's great. I've learned a lot from him.、Um, he has palm, palm, the palm of his hand, palm. He has absolutely no L, and many Americans have no L at all. But I say palm. What gives you the feeling that there's an L there? Huh? It sounds a little Elish, right? But what is it? What am I doing physically? Palm, palm. I do have more lip rounding. I do. Yeah, palm. Yeah, there we go. It's velarized. That's you got it. Okay, Yumi has it. It's velarized. I don't have alveolar contact, but I definitely have velarization. Palm, palm. It's 紧紧绷在后面，舌后紧绷的 Palm, almond. I discussed this with some of my、uh, pronunciation teaching friends over over the internet and email, and they they said, "Oh, I wouldn't teach my students that." 他们就觉得这是不标准的，这拿不出，那不能见人的发音 But I paid attention to it ever since that remark. A lot of times. We pronunciation teachers have very strong prejudices because I keep telling you I just want you to talk the way I do, right? We all do it. We all do it because we think that's the right way. We are all that way. You're that way about your speech. If you want to teach Chinese, you'll tell your students to speak like I do, and they will do well because you speak beautiful Taiwan Mandarin. However, we sometimes forget that there's huge variation in speech groups, and in this case, after these pronunciation teachers said, "Well," Don't teach your students that. I started paying attention, and it's very, very common in American English. Lots of people have that velarized L. Lots, lots of people have it in words like palm and almond. If you listen to anything on the radio with American English speakers, you will hear it often. I can tell you that. I don't have numbers, but I do have my ears and my echoes in my head. Many people don't have it. Many people do have it. That's what I can say. Okay, let us continue. Oh, maybe I should say a little bit more.、Um, the ones that we haven't really looked at closely are alveolar approximants, er and ul. We have not said much about those, and then also we haven't said much about y and w. And that's because these four sounds behave a lot like vowels. And in some cases, ul really is a vowel. For example, ball. Nothing's touching anything. Ball. 悬空，悬空的话 ，what is it? 舌头悬空 is that a vowel or a consonant? It's a vowel, right? So ball is really a very high back vowel. Ooh, ooh, it's a very, very high back ooh. Put your tongue way back and very high, and you get ooh, and that's what I have. So actually, dark l is more a vowel than a consonant. It belongs to a consonant phoneme, but its actual realization is a vowel. So, because all of these four sounds, 
They function as glides, basically. They behave a bit more like vowels than they do like consonants. And you'll be able to see in the spectrograms that we're going to look at what kind of patterns they form because they will be our friends. These four, these four sounds are easy to recognize in a spectrogram. If you look at a spectrogram on any old page, just go a little bit ahead, just look at page 188. Page 188, the top. Now, do you get, do you, do you have the feeling that you would be able to read an English sentence just by looking at this? It sounds outrageous, doesn't it? You will be able to do that by the end of chapter eight. Not perfectly, not in every situation, but we're going to give you exercises where you have to tell us what the spectrogram says. Now don't get terrified because you will get help, we'll go over it in class, and you will have good preparation. It's not as bad as you think. Some of them are a little difficult, but you don't get punished, so don't worry. Um, we'll just try our best, and you'll find that you can actually to a great extent, you can identify many sounds just by looking at the spectrograph, or the spectrogram. And remember with waveforms, we could identify what? Could we identify place of articulation with waveforms, boishing? Let's go look at a waveform. Find a waveform in your book from an old exercise. For example, on page 158. Is it easy to recognize the place of articulation when you're looking at a waveform of speech? We don't know the place of articulation in most cases, but what can we tell? We can see stops. We can identify stops. We can identify voice stops as opposed to, as opposed to, as opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to voiceless stops. We can distinguish voiced and voiceless stops on a waveform. What else can we identify? Fricatives, we can see fricatives. Anything else? Voiced and voiceless fricatives, we can also tell the difference. Remember the tutorial? And just plain noise. Well, that is voiceless fricatives, like sss, you can see it. And we can usually, usually tell vowels. Yeah, we can tell the difference between vowels and consonants. We can, also, we can also tell the difference between vowels and nasals, right? Because nasals are noisier or less noisier than vowels? They're less noisy. So we can actually read a lot of information from waveforms that we learned just last semester. And last semester was supposed to be uh, the phonetics, right? And now we're getting into more specialized phonetics. We're going to be able to do something similar, but more precise with spectrograms. We'll, we will be able to identify actual language sounds and to read sentences. It's not a perfect science. It's an art. But yeah, but you will be amazed at what you can do once you learn what is where. And these sounds are very easy to identify on a spectrogram these four sounds that he just mentioned. Let's go on. A summary of the terms required so far for describing consonants. Of the terms required so far. A summary of the terms required so far for describing consonant gestures is given in the first exercise. In the first exercise. In the first exercise, see page 182. We just say 182. Oh, 182. 182. Oh, 182. Right. 182. Mm -hmm. Note that in order. Mm -hmm. Wendy? Stop. stop it, stops. Note that in order to define a consonant fully, you may need to answer up to eight questions about it. One, what is the airstream mechanism? Good. Two, what is the direction of the airstream? Mm -hmm. Direction? Direction. Dire direction. Direction is more British. Most more Americans say direction, but direction is not wrong. To me, it sounds a little Nambu and Nambu Chang. We're a little prejudiced. I'm sorry. So I go for direction. Sounds more more cultured to me because it's from my my speech group. Three. What is the state uh, the state of the glottis? Glottis. Glottis. Gla. Glottis. Mm -hmm. Glottis. Mm -hmm. Four. What part of the tongue is involved? That's good. Can you link? What part of the? What part? What part of the tongue is involved? Is in. Is involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Part of the tongue. Five. What five. I, five. Right. What is the primary place of articulation? Can you link? 
primary place of articulation. What is the What is? What is? What is this? Uh, what is the primary place of articulation? Prime, you keep saying primary. It's primary. Primary. There we go, yeah. What is the primary place of articulation? Six. Is it central or lateral? Once more. Is it central or lateral? Is it central or uh, is lateral? Is it yoga tea? Is it? Mm -hmm. Is it central or lateral? Okay, once more. Listen carefully. Is it central? Or lateral? Is it central or lateral? That was good. Seven. Is it oral or nasal? And eight. What is the manner of articulation? Can you link? What is the there, what it. is the manner of articulation? A okay, manner of manner of right. articulation. As we will see in chapter nine. Consonants may be even more complicated. Even, uh, even more complicated. There we go. You got it. Good. So, in addition mm -mm, to not in addition. In addition. In addition. Everyone, in addition. In addition. This is a very, very Taiwanese kind of linking. In addition. Inga, inga, inga. Remember, i na, i na, right? So, in addition to starting mm -hmm. all. Oh, uh, to stating, mm -hmm. to stating all the characteristics of primary gesture, it may Not gesture, gesture, gesture. Good. It may also mm -hmm. be. It, watch the T. It. Mm -hmm. It may also be necessary to. Ne, man, ne, necessary. It may also be necessary. That's good. To mention, so, so called. So not so so. So-called right. secondary gestures, such as ad added lip rounding. Beaut lip, lip rounding. <laughs> Good. Okay. I was gonna say how wonderful it was, and then you s <laughs> cut me off with a mistake. Okay. <laughs> you read very nicely, though. Overall, it's beautiful. Let's understand all of these questions. They're important. They're gonna be asked on the next page. First of all, what is the airstream mechanism? What are the airstream mechanisms? Well, let's just look at the next page. It's going to make, you, make it a lot easier for you. What is the airstream mechanism? Our choices are? Good. The next question, what is the direction of the airstream? It's either egressive or ingressive, one or the other. Either we're blowing out or we're sucking in. Three, what is the state of the glottis? And our choices here under three are? This sounds like a game show. <laughs> Go on. Very good. Isn't it easier when the answers are all written out for you? <laughs> okay. And remember, don't say voiced. It's voiced. Voiced. In British, they really do lengthen it more. Because I talk to my friend, and he'll say, when I was a little boy, <laughs> you know, boy, and he really has a longer O than I do. For me, it's pretty short. Voiced. 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 Everyone voiced. Voice. Voiceless. Voiceless. Good. All right. Um, what part of the tongue is involved? Apical, they pronounce it A. And remember, apex is the noun that it's derived from. A P E X is ding jian. Ding jian is apex, the very top. Dim feng ding jian. So, apical and laminal. Or neither, because sometimes it's not either one. This is like an extra detail. This wasn't emphasized very much previously. It was mentioned, and we did get examples. But they're making it a whole separate category for the tongue. Either apical or laminal, or not one or the other. Yes? Uh, I've heard people say neither. Neither, yes. In British English, it's pretty standard. Neither, either, neither in British. In American, some people say it. Um, I don't think it's mainstream. I'm gonna, I, I have my prejudices, you know. I don't say it. Lots of people do say it, but to me, it sounds like you're showing off. How times I might know? Because it sounds more British. But people who say it, for them, it sounds totally, no, totally normal. So always remember that when I tell you things, I'm prejudiced, but I tell you that I'm prejudiced. OK, so you know that. So neither is OK. Either, either. either and neither. Either, either. Right. 
right? Either, either, neither, neither. They're all okay, but if you say neither, you should say either, so you're consistent. Okay. Um, you say tomato, I say tomato. You've heard the song? Mm -hmm. Potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. Yeah, we shall go. Okay, Amy knows it. We'll have to play it during break. Break is coming soon. Okay, um, that's um, the part of the tongue. Five is the primary place of articulation. Let's go through our list. Number five, go. Not palato, palato. Alveolar, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay to have a falling tone on each one. They're very separate that way, but native speakers will usually rise. So we'll go labio, labiodental, dental, alveolar, retroflex. But because it's in a vertical list, make going, using a falling tone is okay, because it's like each one is a sentence. If they were horizontal, we would probably use the continuation rise. So I hope you weren't just reading through it without thinking. I think you probably were. You were in a race. So bilabial, two lips, labiodental. Give me the Chinese, then you'll think more. Bilabial. Labiodental. Mm -hmm. Dental. Mm -hmm. Alveolar. Chiin, right. Retroflex. Or chaoshe. And palatoalveolar. Yin. It makes me think of crocodiles, right? But it's not. And palatal? Yeah, song e, ying e. Velar? Velar? Palatal is ying e. What's velar? Rang e. Rang e, yeah. And uvular? What is it? Xiao she. Don't be afraid. Don't be, don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Xiao she. Pharyngeal? Okay, ho is actually laryngeal. Ho? Yeah, you see it in some books. They don't distinguish them clearly. But in theory, the pharynx is yen. Yen ho, the yen. Yen is the pharynx. Ho is the larynx. And we need to distinguish them, so let's stick with that. Yen bi is the pharyngeal wall. So yen is pharyngeal. Ho is laryngeal. And then labial velar. Yeah. We have chun and... Yeah, we could probably just say chun e. It would probably work. It's chun han rang e. Zui chun han rang e. Shuang chun rang e. Okay, and then let's go back. After <clears throat> primary place of articulation, six is it central or lateral? Our choices are <laughs> central and lateral. And then what's the Chinese? Bian <clears throat> yin is lateral. What's central? Just be very literal and you'll get it. Yang, zhong yang yin. It's called a zhong yang yin. Yang yin is what we use to call what? Shua. We call shua a yang yin. But zhong yang yin is central. That means it has a central release. 就是出足的方式是从舌头上面中央. Mm. Okay. And is it oral or nasal? Oral is in Chinese. Chang in nasal B in the Chang in doko if you want to be more if we want to be more symmetrical then we can say B Chang in Ko Chang in or just B in but Ko in is not very good for oral because it means accent so that's why we need the Chang Ko Chang in B Chang in when we're when we are contrasting the two and what is the manner of articulation let's go through the list give the Chinese English and then Chinese go Se yin. Bao yin is a plosive. <clears throat> and that's produced by a pulmonic, <clears throat> by a, an aggressive airstream mechanism is a plosive. Okay, so stop is just se yin. Next. Mm -hmm. Ta yin. Mm -hmm. Jie jin yin. Not all the books translate it the same, but that's what we're using. <clears throat> okay, approximate jie jin yin. Again. Approximate. Mm -hmm. All right, some people say da shi to, we can call it zhan yin. 
战斗的战，战音 ，right and and tap and these are not distinguished in Chinese. They're both called 闪音 We just 闪电的闪，闪音 A lot of people don't distinguish them in English. We do.、Um, in Chinese, I only know 闪音 for both of them. So you'll have to describe it with. You know, for example, say that it's a retroflex or something like that—a retroflex flap. 就是那个卷舌的闪音 That's probably enough to make it clear.、Mm, let's just finish the text before we take our break.、Um, <clears throat> and it says that, as we will see in chapter nine, consonants are more complicated than we have told you about in this chapter. We're going to get more on consonants in chapter nine. We haven't covered everything. And so, in addition to stating all the characteristics of the primary gesture, we may have to add things like lip rounding. We're not covering those now. We'll just do what we are doing now for seven for the test. And exercises、It、says there are fewer because we need to do larger projects. We went over that earlier, and we're not going to be that ambitious. We just don't have the the time this semester. In the future, you will probably have to do that if you go on in phonetics. And We've already gone over the table, so we'll mark the exercises after break. Okay, guys, we're going to continue now. I think I'd really actually like to play the song for you. This probably won't go on the on the video because of Brian Tran, the wind heat. But I'll just play it for you, and I will show you the. This is Ella Fitzgerald and Louis Armstrong. She has just got. Well, they both are amazing, but Ella Fitzgerald. Just listen to her voice. It's like warm honey. It's and smooth and smooth. And they're singing the song called "Let's Call the Whole Thing Off." When Wendy was asking about neither and neither, this makes me think of the song. Any native speaker you ask will think of this song probably. So, I like the pictures, but let's look at the words. Isn't that fun? There's some more verses here that they didn't sing. Did you see? Here we have father and pater, mother and mater, uncle. Auntie and Uncle Auntie. There's a difference there. Bananas, bananas. Havana, Havana. And scallops, lobsters. That's just two different kinds of food. Okay.、Um, so that's it. Whenever you ask about neither and neither, everyone's going to think about this song. Okay. And one other thing I can add about the u and u problem in English, it's very complicated. 刚好 u 跟 u, there's overlap. Like root and root, you hear both. Roof, roof, hoof, hoof. There are a bunch of words that are still not not very stable. You hear both pronunciations. So u and u is kind of problematic in English, and it starts very long ago. Okay, do we have any questions? We're done with the chapter. We're going to the exercises. Do we have any questions on the chapter you want to ask before we mark our exercises? Well, let's go and mark the exercises then. Whose turn?、Um, let's see.、Uh, Mandy, why don't you just have the camera on everybody, and we'll move, change from person to person fast. Okay. So, give a full description of the following sounds, one term from each of the eight columns in the table above, and it's Vivian's turn. So, read that one. So, this one is just b. Go ahead. Read the sound, and then give one term from each of the columns. Um, but pulmonic, aggressive, voiced, by by labial.、Oh, what about four?、Mm, I think it's neither. It's either neither or neither, <laughs> whichever you like. <laughs> okay. Um, and by labial.、Mm -hmm. Um, central. You're doing fine. Keep going. Be、so、confident. <laughs> Central oral stop. Beautiful. And some people do say oral. I say oral. Oral. Right. Good. Next.、Uh, Pulmonic, aggressive, voiceless,、um, apical, alveolar central oral aspirated stop. Very good. It doesn't tell you to say aspirated, but it's a stop. Very good. Excellent. Next one. For which one? For t for t. I'll take dental. Because it's fine for it's not marked as dental though. How many watts will I? So actually, let's go for alveolar. If they put the dental mark there, then I would say yes. I was going to say yes, but then I thought no. You better stick with what we see. There's no dental mark there. Okay. 
glatelic. Oh, it, first of all, the sound. Make it. Can most of you now produce an adjective? I'm hearing them a lot, especially with the final K in English, both in American and British English, but especially in British English. Like I said, take, take. I heard it this morning on the news, on the BBC. Also Americans do the same thing. So, glatalic, it's, it, it's a, an ejective. Go ahead. Glatalic, aggressive. Gla, gla, what's more? Glatalic, mm -hmm. aggressive, voiceless, apical, uh, dental, central. It's dental? Uh, alveolar. No, it's alveolar. Alveolar, central, oral, fricative. It's a fricative? Mm -hmm. Oh, stop, stop. It's a stop, yeah. Okay, everybody. Um, let's try to make it again. And uvular. <laughs> That's Georgian. We'll have to work on that another day. Okay, very good. Next. Harmonic. Uh, what's the sound first? Um, uh. First of all, make it. Yeah. Make an L. Just make an L. Ooh, and take away the voicing. L. L. Mm -hmm. Harmonic, aggressive, voiceless, laminal, alveolar, lateral, oral. 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 Not O. Oral. Oral. There we go, good. Approximate. Our approximate is noisy? It's a fricative, very good. And the other thing I wanted to say here was what? Um, what was I going to say? The answers are all correct. We'll come back to it later, but yeah. Any question? About. Okay, can you read it again, Tina? Pulmonic, aggressive, voiceless, laminal, alveolar, lateral, oral, fricative. Beautiful. Oh, and I remember what I was going to say. Excuse me. It was, I think it can be either apical or laminal. Both are possible. If you use either the tip or the blade, you can produce the sound fine, no problem. So apical or laminal, I think they're both okay. It didn't say in the textbook. I went and checked. Let's go on. Next. And what is that? Make the sound. Not. Don't go. It's not. None of the, none of the clicks sound like that. So it's post alveolar, remember? OK, mine is not loud enough, but it's right. Let's go on. Valeric. 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 Yeah. Ingressive. Right. Closed. Apical. Palatal alveolar. Central oral stop. Oral stop. Oral stop. Uh huh. Okay. And. Yeah. Closed is good there. It's also voiceless. It's also voiceless. It's both. Yeah. Let's go on. <clears throat> What's the sound? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the sound is mm -hmm. It's pulmonic, aggressive, voiced, uvular, central, oral, trio. How about what part of the tongue? Apical or laminal? Neither. Yeah, it's neither. OK, we finished A. Any questions on A? Does anybody need anything repeated? Yeah. What's the difference between voiceless alveolar lateral approximate and voiceless alveolar lateral fricative? Approximate and fricative? Yeah. Okay. If it's, remember the definition? With an approximate, we don't have audible friction. If we have audible friction, then it's a fricative. Right. Sorry? So the, the sound would be like, and. Oh, okay. Oh, to distinguish the two? Right. The one they give us is the fricative, and that sounds like la. You can hear the friction. 
But if you use the little circle to make it voiceless so we don't have friction, then it's an approximate really, then it's la, la, just an H, no friction. That's the difference. That was, that was an easy question. I wish all questions were that easy. Okay, um, B. Now, five combinations of terms that are impossible. This one is kind of hard. Well, some are obvious, but to think of a bunch of creative ones takes a lot of brain work. I have the advantage of, I've collected these over like 12 years or something, and students always come up with really interesting ones, so I collect them. So I have a bunch, but many of them are from students. Let's, um, do you have one? Let's see, it's, it's your turn, Annie? Yeah. Okay, go. Pharyngeal nasal. All right, we've talked about that. The book said so, right? Pharyngeal epiglottal nasals won't work, right? Labial dental lateral fricative. A labial dental lateral, lateral fricative. fricative. I, I was thinking about that because I also have labial dental and fricative here together. And in theory, uh, labial dental and, and lateral. You could actually make a labial dental sound lateral. So everybody watch. <laughs> it's, the, it's not being released centrally, it's being released laterally. I don't think any language does this, <laughs> but I think it's possible. Isn't it? I mean, just try it. I feel like a breathing dragon, <laughs> right? It's possible, isn't it? So I have my doubts about that. I don't think it occurs, but it, it's not impossible. And they have, they distinguish between those two in the table. How do they distinguish between impossible and simply doesn't occur in the table, in the back, in the inside back cover? Shaded areas. Right, the shaded areas mean it's Impossible, and the white areas means it just doesn't seem to occur. So we were looking for what is impossible. So I thought about that when I think it's possible. It just doesn't happen to occur as far as we know. Okay, anything else? Um, velar nasal trill. A velar nasal trill. So that would have to be... <laughs> <laughs> yep, I've got that one here too. Or just a nasal trill in general. However... There is, like I told you with Stephen um, King, and I, showed, I played that video for you, he did have a nasal, a, a uvular nasal tap. So in theory, I think you could probably trill it as well. So he says, lying, lying. That's how he says lying, lying. I wonder if you could trill that, lying, lying, lying. I think he does trill it sometimes when he's sloppy. Lying, lying, lying. I think you can do it. Uvular, I think they are. Isn't it? Isn't that a navel? Uh, sorry, a navel. Isn't that a nasal uvular trill? Is it or is it not? I think that's a nasal uvular trill. I think you can do it. Or at least it's nasalized. So air is coming out of both. Maybe not fully nasal, but nasalized, yeah. What else? Labiovelar fricative. A labiovelar fricative? A labiovelar fricative. We already have a labiovelar approximate in English, wu. All we have to do is make it a fricative. Hu. And we've got that sound as well. That's a labiovelar fricative. Hu. Hu. If we make it very fricative. So that's possible, right? What else? Pharyngeal lateral fricative. A pharyngeal lateral. Fricative, pharyngeal. <laughs> I think we could do it. it. It isn't the pharynx. It's not. It's not the pharynx that becomes lateral. But you can have the tongue in a lateral position, and you can pharyngealize it. It's a pharyngealized lateral. I would call it that. We can make a pharyngealized lateral. Try it. Just first of all, make a lateral. Ooh, ooh. Now add a pharyngealized sound to it. We can do it. Pharyngealize, but these are secondary articulations, you could say. But that was a really nice list, Annie. You thought about that, and you tried a lot of stuff. That was a very nice list. Good. Okay, what else? I, or is it your turn? Go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm <laughs> passing it on. All right. 
Okay, Annie really did a lot of thinking. That was a very nice list. Um, I was trying to think of some things that really wouldn't work. How about an ingressive trill? Is that possible? An ingressive trill? <laughs> it doesn't work very well. Oh, how about a uvular ingressive trill? I think I can do it. I have it. Yeah, it sounds like someone's snoring. Yeah. It's a sort of uvular ingressive trill, so I think we can do that. How about a velar trill? It's a uvular trill, because look at the man, I think it's possible. That's a velar trill. So actually, I think that's possible too. Hmm, getting tired. Okay. Um, how about a bilabial lateral fricative? That would be sort of like I'm just, what I just tried now. I tried a labiodental, but you could also do a bilabial lateral fricative. <laughs> I think it's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, Velar trio is shaking. I know, I disagree. Because that's the kind of sound that we would make as kids. You know like the funny sounds when we were kids, we would go, oh, stuff like that? That was another funny sound we make. It's not, oh, that's a uvular trill. But if you move it up to the soft palate, I got a trill going there. I got a trill going there, so I disagree. They don't have the gospel truth here. They've been wrong, and they've added new symbols, and I think they're wrong about that. A velar trill is possible. That's a velar trill. Babies make lots of sounds that we could use. Yeah, babies make the funniest sounds. Um, anything else? Okay, dorsal flaps and taps. That's another one that I've got here. I think that, a, um, for example, a pharyngeal flap is impossible. A pharyngeal flap is probably impossible. You can't, you can't put your tongue that deep in, in, into your throat. So a pharyngeal flap, flap, not a frap, flap, is not possible. So you were saying our pharyngeal dorsal taps and flaps. Mm. You mean dorsal, the dorsal part of the tongue? I got I don't think so. No, I don't think dorsal flaps will work. You're right. Tap, maybe, because like Stephen King, that was a dorsal flap, uh, a tap, rather. But flapping out, my, my, that's a tap that's touching the back of the tongue. So actually, it's possible. There are a lot of things that are possible that they're not really considering. Anything else? Yeah. Well, Actually, you're using the tip of your tongue to make the retroflex. That doesn't sound so maldun to me. Ara, ara. You're using the apex of your tongue, and it can be retroflex. And, um, the definition of retroflex is to use the outside. The underside of your tongue. But with a flap, ara, you're flipping it upside. You're flipping it right side up again. So I think it's actually possible. But it's an excellent thought. I mean, you've got some really good terms there. Do you have any more you can share? That's long. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm having processing troubles. All right. Pomonic, aggressive. Voice. Voice. Glottal. Glottal. Uh, central oral fricative. Central oral fricative. Glottal. Uh, we can do that. We can do that. That's true. But that's okay. Murmurs are okay. Yeah. Uh, uh. Yeah, murmurs are voiced. But that was a really good one. Uh, both Annie and Sylvie put a lot of thought into their answers. That's very good. That's excellent. Anybody else? Well, um, pulmonic ingressive voiceless. <gasps> All right, a pulmonic ingressive voiceless stop. We can do that pretty easily. <gasps> <gasps> And I told you how they make these sounds in, in northern Germany, right? No? I thought I did last semester. Anybody remember? Anyway, I lived in northern Germany for a year. First I lived in, I lived in Hamburg 
前后都住过两个不同的地方。And then I lived even further north in a place called Schnellmark. You'll have to use Google to find that. You won't see it on most maps. It's a very tiny, tiny town. But I had a wonderful time there. It's where my aunt's close to where my ancestors on my father's side come from, on my grandmother's side. Um, from northern Germany, where they speak Plattdeutsch. And a lot of people there still spoke Plattdeutsch. But anyway, in northern Germany, when they say yes, they have an alternative way of saying yes if they're not really excited, if they're just saying, yeah, OK. They say, yeah. <gasps> <laughs> it sounds like an emergency, like I've just gasped, because that's a gasp. <gasps> that's called a gasp, G-A-S-P. It's like, don't sit gasp. <gasps> but when they're just saying yes to something like, Oh, it won't do any good. Don't even bother. They'll go, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And it's not just northern Germany. They do it in France. They do it in that part of probably Belgium, the Netherlands. In southern Sweden, it is just an aerial feature. You find it in this huge, huge aerial. Somebody did, a, somebody did a research on it one year. And I was, I was really excited when I was reading John Laver. John Laver is a phonetician you should know about. He wrote a very thick book called Principles of Phonetics. And in my years of teaching this class, and I read his book one year, and suddenly I read about ingressive sounds. And he mentioned this, and I was so excited somebody finally described it. Because I'd been using them, I'd been hearing them and using them in Germany when I was there as a student. But it's only for that word. And I said that it's also in northern France. So they don't say, yeah. what do they say? What's the word for yes in French? Yeah. <laughs> they do it in French with we. Oui. Yeah. So if you're interested, you can look into that. But if you, if you ask your German teacher, they'll probably say no. <laughs> because? Right, exactly. Where are they from? Almost all the German teachers at Taida traditionally are from southern Germany. So if you talk to them about, yeah, they'll just look at you. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very big cultural divide between northern and southern Germany. Just like in America, Texas, they consider themselves a separate country. I mean, there, there's even a Texas independence movement. And lots of us, I better be careful, this is political. <laughs> lots of us in the north think, fine, if you want to be independent, go ahead. <laughs> That's very rude. No offense to any Texans. Um, but honestly, people of Texas, they have a very, they, everything in Texas is very big. Yeah, and their <laughs> egos too. So there's a Texas independence movement. And in Germany, there's often the same kind of talk. The northerners think the southerners are very childish and very suchi. You know, the lederhosen, that's different, right? But anyway, they kind of look down on the people in the south. And then the people in the south think the northerners are a bunch of boring people. Stuffed shirts, stuffed shirts, stuffed shirts. So anyway, what I'm saying is there's a big, this is going to be kind of offensive. We might have to cut this out. Um, there's a big cultural divide between northern and southern Germany. In northern, they use the uvular R. OK. They use the uvular R in the north. And in the south, a lot of people use a R, an alveolar trill. So there's a cultural divide. Anyway, this was back to an aggressive stop. That was all from Wendy's question, right? Was it Wendy's? Or no, no, Yumi, sorry. Very sorry. Lateral? Yeah, we could. Oh, wait, no, wait. A stop, we could make a lateral approximate that's ingressive. And that's, could be either an approximate or a fricative. How do you make a lateral stop? We can have a lateral tap like we have in Minayu, Tsala. That's a lateral tap. But we don't really have a lateral stop, right? We have a lateral approximate and fricative. But those, that's very good thinking, that you were thinking of those things is excellent. And actually, a lateral, ingressive, ingressive lateral fricative, that's the sound we make in what situation? If I say it, you'll think of a situation. What kind? Well, a test is coming up. Or maybe something's too hot. Actually, we make that sound in certain situations. 
。而 when we're really 要小心翼翼，怕怕出问题，怕有麻烦。No, we shouldn't do that. And actually, I this is another story which I was a little embarrassed about at the time, and it changed my behavior because I had a big tray of stuff. I worked at restaurants with Dago when I was your age at the university, and I got tips. It was pretty good money, actually. So I had this big tray. And there were two people here standing, having a conversation in a narrow doorway. And I had to get through with my tray to get it to my customers. So I was coming through, and they're just talking and talking. And I go, and then they looked at me and they went. <laughs> <laughs> so I stopped making that noise. <laughs> in the future, I said, "Excuse me, could I please go through?" <laughs> that was that was more guns to it. That was a lesson. I, but I started out making noises like when I was afraid I was offending them by asking them to move. So we use that sound. Anything else? Glottalic airstream mechanism, right? Yeah, glottalic airstream mechanism. And? Glottalic airstream mechanism or glottalic airstream mechanism. Trill. Okay, so the problem is when we use either the glottalic or the velaric airstream mechanism, what's our 限制 What's our restriction? Of air, and a trill needs to be at least three taps, right?、Brrr. So if we're closing off our glottis, our store of air is very small. So let me try. I can do it. Oh, try it! Try it! Close your glottis. Close your. I never ever thought of that. I I love it when you give these new ideas. It, everybody has wonderful, wonderful imagination. That's good. Okay, so. I'm totally holding my breath. B C. That's closing your glottis. It's possible. I never, ever, ever thought of that. Nobody ever mentioned that. Can all of you please write down what you wrote and then email it to me or post it? How about if you post it on NTU Phonetics? How about? Please put it on 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 Facebook, and then you will get also. What? That's what I was gonna say. It's now more than 300 people. A lot of people really enjoy our page. I mean, isn't that kind of a a long shing, a long shing? That's what I meant to say.、Um, post it there, just as you sort of for fun and for culty, and then ask all the people on the list. Do you think this sound is possible? And see what they say. Because I'm telling you, I believe some are possible, right?、Mm -hmm. See what the people on NTU phonetics say. We've got some very high-profile phoneticians there. You know. Besides John Wells, we have quite a few friends of mine who are very, very good linguists and very good phoneticians. See what they say, okay? And there's a lot of Yanjiao Sheng too. So please, everybody, post. That's an assignment. Do it. Okay. I'll write it down. So I'm not forgetting. Voice, glottalic voice. One minute. I'm sorry. I have to write down. Hang on. Just one second. Post on NTU Phonetics Facebook. Impossible articulations. Everybody, no, seriously, anything that you have, even if it, even if I said it's not impossible, these are very, very creative, and I would, I would love to have a collection there, and I'll, I will keep it for the future. I'm sorry, Sylvie.、Yeah. Do you have a glottalic voice sound? Glottalic voice sounds. Well, yes, implos, implosives. But, but it's not totally closed though, because some, a little bit of air is coming through to make it voice. If it's an aggressive glottalic, what stop or what? Stop. So, aggressive glottalic stops that are voiced. I think I saw it on the net. There's one place that has them, and it's really rare. I can't say for sure. I looked it up after class. I think there is such a thing, but it's extremely rare. So, uh, 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 it's difficult. I don't know if it's impossible. It's difficult. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. I think you can do it. I think they're just very, very rare. They're very, very rare. Okay, but I think it's possible. Anything else? Is 
possible to make a glottalic trill, but is a rhythmic trill also possible? That's what I was just answering. So, that's a valeric trill. Instead of, which is uvular, it really is. I'm using kosue. It's more like a gargle. But I would call that a trill. It's a valeric trill. Yeah. See if somebody disagrees. Post it on NTU Phonetics and see what the other phoneticians say. Anything else? Do you have any other good ideas? You have some really, really excellent ones here. That, that was good. Thank you. Anybody else have a contribution? Even if you think it's silly. Anybody? A labiodental trill. I think that's really hard. I don't think we can do that. Yeah. I think that qualifies as pretty well impossible. Labiodental trill. All right, everybody try to make a labiodental trill. We can make a fricative. It just comes, a, comes out a fricative. I can't make a trill. Okay? What about a labiovelar trill? Labiovelar trill. I can make a velar trill with rounded lips. So if I went, oh, oh, is that good enough? Okay, <laughs> thank you. Put it, put it on Facebook, please. All of these, put them on Facebook. Anything else? Yeah. The velar trill is the sound when you are short For uvular, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So, anything, Sylvie? Mm -hmm. So, like, the uh, labial signature will go before it adds a nasal. In front, will that, will that help? Because we need to uh, have a nasal mm -hmm. in front of a labial signature. Uh huh. That's very good thinking. That's excellent thinking. So, boo, right? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I still get a fricative. We've got too, there's too much air coming through the teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I always get a fricative. I can't do a trill. And for me to say I can't do something, that means I've really given up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? These are really nice. Anything else? You, me, any more? I'm trying to make a nasal trill. Well, like I said, you can have a, uv a nasalized uvular trill. You can do that. Stephen, Stephen King does do that. You can have a you can have a nasalized trill and in fact an alveolar trill you can do that too. There you go. You can nasalize a lot of things. It's not a nasal trill but it's a nasalized trill. Good. Anything else? These are some really great ones. Hi Yoma. Ah, goi. That was great. That was really fun. All right. Thank you very much. Let's go on to C. I think this is the most um, elaborate answer we've given in the history of this class, okay? But they did have some other years. Students came up with some very good ones. Um, C, if we overlook secondary articulations such as rounding, most con uh, consonants can be specified by using one term from each of these eight columns. But in addition to affricates such as ch and j, one of the consonants listed in chapter two cannot be specified. Which one is it? What's the answer? Anybody? Actually, we mentioned it explicitly in class last semester. It's a consonant that we cannot specify by taking an item from each of those lists. Nobody found an answer for C? Not sure is okay. Did you guess? What? Mm -hmm. That's right, and it's also got a secondary, well, it's actually a double articulation. Um, so, and we're overlooking rounding, he says. I think a rounding was swan. Labiovelar would almost count. Lingual labials. <clears throat> but it's one of the consonants listed in chapter two. Chapter two, which means it has to be a consonant from, from what? From English. It has to be an English consonant. So, yeah. the, uh, the question on the, in the textbook and here, they said the chapter, and they said. Uh, in the chapter on transcription, yeah. 
They, they, mean, they mean chapter 2. The, I'm using, they mean chapter 2. In the chapter on transcription, that, that should be chapter 2. Maybe they weren't sure what chapter it was going to be. They really need to do some editing for consistency, I'm afraid. So it's an English consonant in any case. Is it? A glottal stop? <clears throat> a consonant. All right, is, is, is that listed as a consonant in chapter 2? Uh, but if it were, it would be right, because you couldn't do it. You're missing something. You couldn't give us a place of articulation, right? Yeah, so if glottal stop is counted as a, as a consonant, then that answer would be correct. Yeah. Okay, in that case we can count. I didn't have that in there. I'll add that. You're right. Okay. Can you think of another one? H. It's H. I hadn't thought of the glottal stop because it's not a phony, but it is certainly one of the sounds of English. Yeah? Um, glottal stop um, appears on page 43, mm -hmm. but it doesn't appear on the chart, the table on page 36. Mm -hmm, that's right. Yeah, I know, they're not very consistent about that. But it doesn't say which page it says chapter 2. So in chapter 2, I'm assuming it is mentioned somewhere. Transcription. Okay, the, the chapter on transcription is definitely chapter 2 case you're wondering. And it is on page 43. So, glottal stop, that's a good answer. I had never thought of that. And H is the answer that I've been using all these years. H. And how could we solve it? How could we uh, remedy this? How can we rem remedy this def deficiency? How can we remedy this deficiency? They do remedy it on the inside back cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if we add glottal, H is not really glottal, but that's the best we can do. Because its place of articulation is huodongde. It depends on the next vowel. So if we add glottal, that at least gives us a place to put the H, even though it's not very accurate. That's the best that I think I, I could do. But I think that's an excellent point. Um, Bella is adding glottal stop. Good. D. Still without considering secondary articulations and affricates, what sounds mentioned in this chapter cannot be specified by taking one term from each of the eight columns? Whose turn? Whose turn is it? Bella, you want to take a turn? Oh, that was a very wonderful answer. Do you want to do another one? <laughs> Sorry? Um, glides? Glides? Mm. We didn't really discuss glides in this chapter, though, right? Right. Um, and besides, glides usually have a place of articulation. So I don't think that would be such a problem. And they are approximants. Glides are approximants. So glides doesn't work. Anybody else? It doesn't have to be one person. How about if we all just call out answers? All oh, right, alveolopalatals is one because they didn't list that. Although the place of articulation is really close to palatoalveolars, uh, alveolars, it is different. So, mm -hmm. ch is different from qi. Sh is different from qi. So we couldn't get alveolopalatals. That's one. What else? Right. We don't have aspiration mentioned here. All we have is voiceless, and they're not the same thing. So like spot, the P is voiceless, but put, it's voiceless and aspirated. And we don't have a specification for aspiration. That's right. What else? What else? Stop with ejected lateral release. Yes, ejected lateral release. We can't do that. Excellent. We don't have that. It's glottalic, and it's aggressive, and... We've got what? We've got a T with it. So uh, it's T and L. And we don't, we don't have a lateral release. Yeah. OK? So it's la, la. 
Um, what else? Look at, look at that long table that we went through. There's, a, there's another couple in there that this table is, that this system is not adequate for. The table on 173, what other sounds can we not adequately describe using these terms? Ejective lateral release gives you an idea of where to look. Sorry? Nasal, nasalized, uh, nasal release and also prenasalized, yeah. We can't describe those very well either. Not very well, we can't at all. We'd have to make some changes. So prenasalized nasal release, ejective lateral release, none of those um, can be described just using these terms. Anything else? There was something, um, Sylvie, you mentioned a little earlier for number or letter C, and I said, uh, but we can only use sounds from English. Lingual. Right, right, lingual labials. We'll have trouble describing lingual labials as well. Does anybody have anything else? I have one more possible, possible answer. Um, because it doesn't get epiglottal, you mean? Yeah, because I'm not sure whether epiglottal is glottal or pharyngeal. Um, in any case, they don't have epiglottal, so the epiglottals are not here. I think that's a good enough answer. They don't mention epiglottal, yeah. So any epiglottals, we don't have a term here. Good. Anything else? I can think of one more possibility. And it's sort of like cheating, but. <laughs> it says that we're not supposed to consider secondary articulations in affricates. However, they didn't mention one thing that we can't describe using these terms. Something similar to a secondary articulation. Hmm? Semi vowel? No, that's an that's an approximant or a glide. Huh? Lip rounding. That's a secondary articulation. Dark L. But then we could just um, a dark L. We'd have to specify. We might have to specify two places of articulation. You're right. It would have to be both alveolar and Velar, if it's like ball, but if there's no alveolar contact, then there's no problem. We just pick velar. There's one other thing. It's under stops, I think, isn't it? Here we go. It's not under stops. It's on page 172. Or maybe it is okay. Because I guess the only examples we have are, let's see, our labial velars, and we do have a labial velar um, in the list. Yeah, maybe it would work. I was thinking of double articulations, double articulations. But the only double articulations that we have examples for are labial velar, and they do say labial velar. So actually, those are probably okay. Yeah. Ah, ba, ah, ba, with b and g together. So it says labial velar, that's probably good enough. Okay, anything else? That's it. We're done with the written part. Let's hurry and do the performance part. We're almost done here. Have we done these in class yet or not? Hi, Mayo. Okay, let's just go. Let's just do them all together. Um, start with B, because, oh no, I guess we have an example here with T. So using the diacritics, plus and minus, to mean more forward and more retracted, respectively. A series of this kind could be symbolized like this with T. Let's try to go through this series starting from a more um, forward dental T all the way back to a very back retroflex T. Okay, everybody find it? We're letter A in performance exercises with T. So we start with fat. Look at me. Fat. 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 
All right, let's go from there all the way back. Go. Ba, 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 ta, da, da, da. All right, and then duh would be about the same. Let's just do it quickly with duh. Da, 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 da. And then let's try it with a nasal. Na, 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 na. Na na. All right, and then with sh, to, to, yeah, from sa all the way back to a, a very far back um, retroflex. Go. Sa 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 sha sha. Okay. Good. E. Let's try it with voiced version. Go. Za za za. Za, ja, ja. All right, and then a series of voiceless fricative articulations with a tongue tip down. Start with a palato alveolar fricative with the blade of the tongue. Make sure you're not doing it with the tip of your tongue. Then move the point of articulation backward by raising the front of the tongue so you get a, how do we make that sound? Yeah, yeah, if we put a vowel after it. So, Sh, hye. If let's put an I after it, it's too hard without a vowel. So, sha, hya, ha, ha. Again, sha, hya, ha, ha. And then finally pull the tongue root back so you get a pharyngeal fricative. Ha, ha. Okay. And then we just already did that. That's already G. H. Let's do the voice version, go. Ja, ya, ga, ga, ha. Okay. Um, say these fricatives before vowels, and we already did that. J. Um, let's practice these, because some of you maybe don't get these yet. The first one, this is a palatal stop, a voiceless palatal stop. Yeah. 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 Like T, not K. T, think of T plus Y plus ah, tia. Yeah. Tia. Yeah. All right, now use a large area of your tongue against your hard palate. Tia. Tia. There we go. I didn't hear any kia this time. The second one is, is ga. Or so the first one, tia. Ga. 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 Practice the uvular stop. Let's voice them. Ya. Ya. Like a D, Y, A sound. Ya. Yeah. Ga, ga, ga. Ra. Okay. Nasals. Nya, yeah. nga, nga, nga. nga. Ma. Good. And then let's do the next one. M. Ama, ana, ana, ana. Nya, anga, anga. Okay. Remember the palatal. Let's try it again. Ama, ana, ana, ana. Anya, anga, anga. Let's try it with b, with the b sound, and then do a bunch of different consonants slowly. N, apa, ata, ata, arta, atya, aka, aka. All right, voiced. Aba, ada, ada, arda, adya, aga, aga. Okay. Voiceless fricatives. A fa, a fa, a fa, a sa, a sha, a sha, a hya, a ha, a ha, a ha. Okay. Voiced. A va, a va, a va, a za, a ja, a ja, a ya, a ra, a ra, a ra. Okay. We're almost done. And S. So let's try the trills, taps, and flaps. Go. Ara, 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 ara. Do you know what these all are? How about if you repeat after me just to make sure I want to hear you can get them? Ara, 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 ara. Okay. And then between high vowels, it's harder. Okay? Iri. 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 
iri, 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 not that bad. Okay, now the laterals. You need practice with laterals because we did those last and they're not as familiar. La, 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 wait, I didn't use the adjective. La, la. All right, let's try that one again. La, 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 okay. Nonsense words. Re, sa, i. Again? Re, sa, i. Next. Flu, pe, ro. Again. Flu, pe, ro. Do you think the nigga z is a r z r z in Chinese? R. Once more. Flu, pe, ro. Okay, next. Fi, ro, ya. Uh huh, next. Ko, ri, ro. Uh huh. Nye, nye, re, fu. Watch the stress once more. Nye, re, fu. Good. Next. Ta, mo, je. Good. Next. Be, de, la. Uh huh. Vi, no, ye. Uh huh. Re, lia, ha. Again. Re, lia, ha. Again. A uh, next one. Sorry. La, ne, ho. Again. La, ne, ho. Okay. Next one. E, ho, nu. Good. Do, e, ro. Implosive. Ro. Ro. Uh -huh. Once more. Do, e, ro. Next. She, she, e. Good. Re, oh sorry, that has stress. Re, he, ru. Uh huh. Mo, ba, de. We did it. We're done with chapter seven. Test on next Monday. All right. Remember to put your wonderful contributions on Antio Phonetics on Facebook. Don't forget your your notes, your pronunciation plan update. The TAs have been reminding you, please put your plan on your, in your notes and then give a progress report. Um, don't forget vowels and consonants. We'll probably have that pronunciation diagnostic test together with the, um, with the chapter test plus the dictation. And then we're going to start chapter 8. Chapter 8 is the big one. Okay? Yeah, it'll be like a party. <laughs> Okay, we'll see you on Monday.